Hey, one Weekly Musical Teachers. I don't know about you, but whenever I have to have a sub come into my classroom for music, I get really stressed out for a couple of different reasons. One, because I think it's way harder to have to make sub plans and all that stuff for your class than it is to just be in your classroom. And so I try avoiding having to have a sub at all costs. And two, because sometimes you can leave stuff and the sub just doesn't pay attention to it, or maybe you don't know what to leave the sub and they don't know your schedule or your routines and they end up doing stuff like musical chairs in your classroom or leaving your classroom a complete dumpster fire because going and being a sub for a music classroom is vastly different than being a sub for any other type of classroom. And I feel like subs are not always prepared or we are not always leaving them prepared to the best of their abilities to make sure that our class like is kept standing and alive at the end of the day, especially because the chances of you getting a music sub are pretty much slim to none. Not, not impossible, because mine is actually a, the old band director at my school, so that's pretty great. But if this video is going to be a two-part sub video series for the person that is struggling with figuring out how to make sub plans and have subs work in your classroom. And so this video today is going to be focusing on what to actually leave behind for a sub in your classroom. Like what sort of resources, materials, like papers, information should you be leaving for them? And then in mid-April, we're going to have a video that actually highlights like the sub plans that I leave for my classroom for both planned absences and unplanned absences because sometimes they're emergencies and you don't know when you're going to need those plans. And so if that is something that is interesting to you, then please make sure to like and subscribe down below to my channel. That'll really help my channel grow. For those who don't know me, my name is Franny Barden. I teach elementary music and also musical theater. I've been doing it for about eight years and my goal with this channel is to help all music teachers instill a love and appreciation for music in the heart of every child. And we do that through ideas, lesson plans, tips, tricks, strategies, basically anything I can to help you further music and love in your classroom. If you're interested in that, subscribe every single Monday. But like I said, this is going to be a two-part video series. So today we'll tackle what you should leave behind for a sub. And in mid-April, we'll tackle what actually I do for a sub, like what lesson plans I like using that have worked well over the years. I will say this has all been tried and true effort. I have had terrible, terrible sub experiences and I've had better ones. And so everything I'm going to talk about, I feel like has been really good. I've gotten lots of tidbits and like information from subs that I've had in my classroom to help me compile this all into something easily manageable for you. The binder that you're actually going to see is my music sub plan binder that I created because there was nothing really out there that I wanted that I thought fit what I needed. Like there were a couple music teacher sub binder templates on TPT, but I didn't really like any of them. So I made one that has fit and worked really well for my classroom. So if you are interested in the planner that I show you in a minute, of course, I'll link it underneath this video. Go check it out. You can have it. It's completely editable and up to you. But that is what I'm going to be showing you. So I'm actually going to rotate to where you can see my planner overhead and I'm going to walk you through all the things and then we'll come back to tidy this all up at the end. I will say I have three binders and that might be going a little overboard, but you know what? It is what it is. I have the music sub information binder, which is what we're going to talk through. I have a planned absences sub plan binder, and that's literally only where I put lesson plans, which my lesson plan template looks like this. It has the dates that you're covering, uh, the grade level, materials needed, activities, and then this is activities continued. And I have it by grade level K1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I have a planned absences binder. And then I have an unplanned absences binder. And I only have the planned absences binder in there if I know that I'm leaving, like it's planned. As soon as I'm back, I take this binder out. So the only thing in there is this and the unplanned one because these are stuff I don't have prepped. They're ones that I made specifically prepped. And these ones are the other binder is ones that are ready to go regardless. So we're just going to talk about the actual music sub information binder. I will say uh, I this is a binder that I don't have binder tabs for, but I did make these in case you wanted to have these, but I don't actually have these in my binder, which is fine. And at this current moment, I don't have divider tabs. Uh, I'm working on that. I do have actual like divider tabs you can use. And these are what I categorize them as music room schedule and information, music room and school info and routines, behavior management procedures, music sub lesson plans and end of day forms. Please fill it out. And then I have insert your own ones here so that they can all be completely customizable for your needs if you need them. But now that we've talked about all that, let's dive into what's actually in this binder. So, of course, it says my name and that is my music sub binder. 
And then we get to the hello. It basically just says, thank you so much for taking over my classes. This binder will help you find all the information you need. The lesson plans require no tech because at my school, we're supposed to have them require no tech. So they're easy for them to use. Make sure to fill out the end of day form so I know how it went and how far you got into my lesson. Thank you so much and all that. And then I have the actual table of contents, which is everything that we're going to talk about. I'm going to try not to make this video super long, but we have welcome letter, a music room schedule and information, which includes music room schedule, my class rosters and attendance sheets, my class seating charts, um, music room and school info and routines includes staff to know, arrival and dismissal, attendance policy, bathroom water policies, and fire drill procedures. My behavior management procedures include cl music classroom rules and behavior management procedures. My music sub lesson plans are by grade level. And then the end of day forms ask, how did it go? Also, I apologize for the glare. That is my ring light. There's not much I can do about it, but we'll be fine. Okay, so first, first thing I have in here is my music room schedule. And this is an example schedule. So it has the time of the classes and what the teacher and grade level is. So as you can see, my school has chapel in the morning. And then I have like third, fourth, fifth, third, lunch, and then third, second. Uh, I have it depending on if it's a planned absence. I actually have the schedule for every day in here just so they know so that it's there for everything. I just don't have that currently. They're all actually in here and I need to get more of these little things. Obviously, I haven't had to use this in a while because I've been in my classroom, but it looks the same for each of these. And then I even have blank ones where this is not filled in at all in case you want to do yours differently. But I do typically include this for every day just so that no matter what day they are covering, they can look in here and know, oh, this is my schedule for today and I don't have to worry about anything else. Then we go over to class rosters and I do try to have a roster if I can and I insert the teacher's name, the grade level here and put a check mark next to present students. That way I just know who was there in case someone does give them a hard time because I do have students that give them a hard time and instead of telling them prior because I don't like to put a target on the kids back. I'd rather just know, you know, who was there, who wasn't. Uh, this one is not that important, though. Honestly, you could get by without this because how often are you going to be checking who was in your classroom when you weren't there? I mean, let's be honest. I just have it there in case you really wanted it. And then you could add your seating chart if you want. There's two different styles for this. There's vertical, there's horizontal, depending if you want, if you want to make sure the kids are sitting where they're supposed to and they're not just sitting wherever. Although my kids know better by now that they better just sit where they're supposed to. And I've never really had issues about that. But I also just have my seating charts. I actually make them on the computer. So I would typically just print my seating charts out and put them in here instead of just using this template. But you do whatever works best for you. Let me get to the next section. And this is required, includes stuff like staff to know. And I find this always good to have. I put the principal's name, the secretary, the dean, or you can change this out. I have this editable as well. And then buddy teachers, people you can reach out to in a pinch if you're struggling. And for me, that's my art teacher and my theater teacher. And I put them there and I put where you can find them so that if the sub is struggling, they can't figure out the tech, they they can't figure out where your sub plans are and things. These other teachers can help them so that they're not having to bother so-and-so. Although if they need to, they need to ultimately. Then we have arrival and dismissal procedures. So I put what mine actually are, which mine says, usually I meet my class downstairs at the double doors at the bottom of the stairs outside the classroom. They come up the stairs closest to the music room. Dismissal is you take them back downstairs to the double doors for their teacher to pick them up. So I put arrival and dismissal just so that they know, because most of the time the classroom teachers are not gonna know that there's a sub up there and they're gonna be confused. Why is the schedule changing? And so I put that in there. I think that's good for them to know so that your sub also knows like, what they need to be doing when each class is arriving and dismissing and it gets your kids in that routine. And then I have attendance procedures, which for me, you don't need to enter attendance anywhere. I like to take it in case a fire drill or something happens though, so I know who is with me because you never know when a fire drill is gonna happen at my school particularly because they always announce it in an email 10 minutes prior. And of course I'm always teaching during that time. So I never am aware of when a fire drill happens. But so that's why I keep the rosters one, especially so that the teacher knows who was with them at what time and they don't have to worry about having lost a kid because a sub doesn't need that sort of drama in their life. Then we have bathroom and water procedures. I don't let my students get water. I do allow bathroom breaks, however, because once too many kids start asking, I shut down bathroom entirely. Uh, and that's just a thing for me. So that way they also know what your things are. If you don't let kids go to the bathroom, if you don't let them get water, don't just let them do it because there's a sub there. Make sure they're still following your guides. So I think it's important to still like note this, let the sub know just so they're aware of what goes on in your classroom when you're not there. 
and then fire drill procedures. For me, this is a change. They used to only always be Thursdays, and this was put in there when it was a planned absence. I guess that wasn't a Thursday, but if one happens, you take the emergency exit in our room downstairs, so I tell them where their fire escape path is. I probably should actually put a map in here and make that even more efficient and change what this needs to be. This is showing that I need to edit a couple of things, but make sure they know what to do in case of a fire drill, because you never know when one's going to happen. Then we get to the actual classroom rules section, and I do put my classroom rules in here just so they know, and mine are just M-U-S-I-C, make good choices, use good manners, speak when appropriate, involve yourself, care for equipment. And then I also put my music behavior procedures for the entire class, which I don't have in here currently, um, but you could insert your procedures for if the entire class is not following music rules and procedures, like what typically happens. Do you want your subs to address behavior? If you are having a problematic child, like what are you going to have them do? I have stuff for individual student as well, because you don't want your sub to not know what to do. Like maybe they think they can send them to the office and they're actually not allowed. Maybe they think they're allowed to send them to timeout and they're actually not allowed. So make sure you let the sub know what is and is not acceptable as far as behavior management goes when you're not there. And as I mentioned, I actually, we'll go to this first. This is what's actually supposed to be in front. I have lesson plans and it says, you may find my lesson plans in the planned absences binder in the sub tub, which is located on the counter behind my desk. All other materials can be found in the sub tub or on the counter behind my desk, as well as any links you may need to pull up on the internet. And so I leave this for the subs so that they know to go to the planned absences binder and find all the lesson plans right there, easy to go. And the last thing that I normally have in there is a how was your day one, which I have a couple in here so I can get them ready. And I say, I have them circle how your day went. What did you finish today? Um, which I'll get rid of this insert text here. What did you finish today? Who was great? Who struggled? Anything else? And then they fill this out for me. I've had subs fill this out for me. It's been very helpful before. I've had subs say stuff like, oh my gosh, it was a fabulous day. Everything was great. I've had subs say that none of the tech was working or that this wasn't working or that this little kid made everything go wrong or that the class didn't show up. I've had it go all types of ways, but this lets your sub know like, oh, you actually care how it went. Like you genuinely care about your classroom. And trust me, there's been times where I've come back to my classroom being a tornado and I'm like what the heck happened and if I don't have this form I have no idea no idea no idea but that is all the stuff that I have inside of my binder typically just to let they know and then like I said I'll show you the planned absences one one more time that literally just looks like this I have the lesson plan thing if you look in here these are just not in that because I'm I haven't used this I'm telling you in a little bit like they just look like this but I'm transitioning to this because I think this looks a lot prettier because you know it does but that's everything so now we're going to go back to wrapping up this video with my beautiful face and that is what I leave behind for a sub in my classroom. Like I said, you can use what little of that you want and what of that you will. If you want that exact binder template with all of the editable parts of it, then please look underneath this video for a link to the product and I will gladly be able to give that to you. And just make sure that whatever you are leaving behind for your sub is easily accessible for them because the easier you make it for them to follow what you want them to follow, the, e the better they'll do it. If you make it really hard, they're just going to ignore it. Like I'm, I'm telling you, they're just going to ignore it. So I hope this was helpful for you and video two will be coming out in the middle of April. Let me know down below what problems you've encountered with subs in your classroom. Maybe let's have a chat, a discussion about that in the comments below and we can help one another make sure that the music classroom does not go to complete chaos when we're gone. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.